All right. Well, until then, some honest, real reaction on the Pro Day workouts that happened on Wednesday. It's more important this year than any other year because, number one, no scouting combine where we got everybody together on an apples-to-apples basis. And number two, no private workouts where teams can get secret information that we're never privy to. What they're getting is what we're getting. What they're seeing is what we're seeing. And one of the guys we saw yesterday, Jamar Chase at the LSU Pro Day. Chris, 438 in the 40. And you've been on top of this idea that we just can't accept that right. as being as accurate as it would be in Indy. Right. But but still, it's 438 right. for a guy that wasn't expected to crack 4-4. Whether it's 438 or 448, it's still pretty good. No, it is still really good. You're right. I'm just trying to let people know that those times, you're going to see a lot more 4-3s this year than you would in normal years, definitely. But either way, I mean, Jamar Chase – you know, it, first off, what you do is you watch the film to go, wait, what does he look like he runs like on film? And he looks like he runs 4-3-8 on film with the way he plays, with what he does with the ball in his hand. I mean, all of this is special. You know, his his L drill, his 5-10-5, I believe he went in like the three nines, if I'm correct, Pete, like that right there. That's insane. Like, Three, you know, the guys that go in three nine in the three nines are usually like really small slot type receivers. This guy's, you know, six foot, over two hundred pounds. There's real explosive movements with this player, and that's why he'll be a top ten pick. It's just I would be shocked if he's not. He's just one of those guys that you know is special and has a special way in which he carries himself in a mature way on the football field. He was the best player in college football non-quarterback wise last year as a true sophomore um so really the the sky's the limit for this guy the 41 inch standing vertical was right? amazing mm -hmm. i it may have been more than 41 because it looked like he got above the top the top thing that you hit to to flip it around to prove how high you can jump i mean that that was something and uh it just it proves that this is one of the top receivers in the draft here yeah. he is from yesterday talking about the possibility of going fifth overall to the Cincinnati Bengals and being reunited with his LSU quarterback, Joe Burrow. I have talked to the Bengals. Um, I don't know how many times I've talked to them, though. Um, but me and Joe, you know, I, I, I wouldn't mind going back with Joe. Um, you know, if we go back together, we try to do nothing but get back on chemistry and have some more fun. I think I would have an advantage if I was to play with him only because we played a couple of years. Um, but... We'll still have to get that groove back ahead, you know, feel for it again. It's, it's not just going to be there when we throw again. So we have to build that chemistry back up and work hard again. You have to wonder after that workout yesterday. Now, I, I would say the Bengals at five or the ceiling. I, The Falcons with Calvin Ridley and Julio Jones, yeah, even if it is Julio so. Jones last year. I, 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 I can see them going quarterback because of the importance of the position and because Matt Ryan could be in his last year. I just think it would be too much to go with a receiver at four, which would Agreed. give the Bengals a, a hell of an option, chase at five or trade down to somebody who's desperate to come up and get a quarterback and uh, and go elsewhere at the receiver position. That's going to be a decision that they're going to have about 10 minutes to make, but surely they'll have a plan for what they're going to do depending upon what those first four picks may be. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you and your thought there with the Falcons. Uh, you know, Julio is there. Calvin Ridley has kind of, I mean, not kind of, he's established himself as a number one receiver in football. He's going to take that, you know, thrown over once Julio leaves probably after next year. The Bengals, that's where it starts. I mean, five and six, we could see wide receiver, wide receiver right off the board right there. And then, two, you know, both guys get reunited with their old college quarterbacks uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm interested. The Bengals, uh, Bengals, of course, have some other needs on their team. Would they go... You know, the, the offensive line route, uh, I, I don't know. You know, Jamar Chase is a really special football player, as is Devontae Smith. I mean, they're worthy of that top 10 pick. But I, I would think that's where it starts right there at number five. And that's the big reason I think the Dolphins got back up to number six because they probably had some of the same logic we were talking about. They're going, wait, if we're at six, we're going to get one of those two guys you know, most likely with how this shakes out. And, and and I would think their logic about Atlanta is similar to ours. We were asked about this yesterday on PFTPM, the possibility that the Dolphins would have Justin Fields available to them at six and would take him. And if that's what they would do, that's the ultimate gutsy Jedi mind trick all-in move to drop out of the third spot to 12, back up to the sixth spot, 
and just kind of bide your time and and let Fields fall through the cracks to six and jump on him there. I, I doubt that they would do it. That would mean that they're they they have real doubts about Tua that they're willing to act on. I agree with you. I mean, the Dolphins are in a great spot to get one of these great receivers, whether it's Jamar Chase, Devontae Smith. The Bengals are in great position. And the Lions are in great position yeah. to get either either uh, Jamar Chase or the guy we're going to talk about in a second here, Kyle Pitts, the tight oh, end out of Florida. Not thought, that the right. Lions need him. Right. Lions don't need him. But uh, um, I don't know. Yeah, well, We see what the Patriots are trying to do with two tight ends. Could you imagine the Lions offense with both TJ Hawkinson and Kyle Pitts, the way Pitts performed yesterday? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's, you know, crazy. Uh, I don't. I mean, you know, it, it creates a lot of mismatches, those two tight end sets. But I, I'm with you in the fact that I think my first thought is, you know, you're going you're gonna to take two tight ends in the top ten of the draft, two out of three years. I, I, I don't look at it. But I look at Kyle Pitts and as, you know, again, mismatch nightmare. 244 pounds, runs 4-4-4. Four, four, four. You know, as smooth as can be running routes, you know, has unbelievable ability to, you know, one of those guys, again, Mike, but when he's covered, he's not covered. You could just throw it to him because he's so a athletic as far as adjusting the ball. I mean, his 83-inch wingspan that he had yesterday, that's unreal to go along with it. So when you uh, – that's where, you know, we talk about Chase, Devontae Smith, 5-6 to the Dolphins and, and Bengals there. You know, I think Kyle Pitts is probably in that conversation, too, to think like, no, it, it's all three of those guys that are top 10 picks, difference makers for your football team. And I do think, you know, fit a positional need, you know, maybe more so for the Bengals and the Dolphins. They do have Gasicki, who's like that. Um, but but either way, th this is a top 10 pick in Kyle Pitts and Jamar Chase. And it's uh, going to be interesting to see where they both land. Most eye-popping numbers for a tight end since Vernon Davis, who ran a sub-4-4-40 four, four, in 2006 yeah. and was a top-10 pick of the 49ers and a great contributor at the NFL level for a long period of time. Here's Pitts running that 4-4-4, four, 83-inch four, four, wingspan, the largest of any receiver or tight end in the last 20 years, 83 inches. Makes it a lot easier to complete passes when the arms can fly out that wide. And he's not even... 21 Chris he turns 21 in October now tell me if that body says to you tight end he just looks like he looks like a really big receiver and I wouldn't be surprised if we we see him in the slot a yeah. lot and maybe split out wide from time to time that's what you're gonna see him doing the you know majority of stuff will be that you know the first thing is he'll get bigger he's gonna be able to put more just easy natural muscle onto that frame there's no doubt but, yes, I would think he gets used in that mold of Travis Kelsey where he's extended from the line of scrimmage a lot. Oh, we have him one-on-one -on -one out here with three receivers over here. Wait, oh, all right, the linebacker went out on him. Oh, it's man-to-man. -man. Okay, well, that, line, that linebacker, he can't cover, you know, Kyle Pitts. It's, it's like the old New England Gronkowski Aaron Hernandez thing where not only is it like a great – you know, telltale sign when you have a tight end like Pitts and all of that. It's like we always talk about. He's a pretty good blocker to go along with it. So now you wait. Do we put in a nickel back because we're worried about them throwing the ball? Do we put in the other linebacker because, wait, he could do it to the traditional tight end spot and they can run the ball on us? That's the great value of a guy like that, let alone he has, he has big-time talent. I mean, he does. He's got the type of talent to be up there in yards and reception leader and be, be one of the best in the game. Here's Pitts talking about one of the teams that could be taking him in the top five, the Atlanta Falcons. I did talk to him on Zoom a couple of times, and I talked to him. I had a day, and they're saying they have interest in me. And uh, after after today, we'll get back on another Zoom and try, you know, they'll try and learn more about myself. So uh, I feel like they're pretty interested in this. You know, it, it will be a, a dream come true to be, even be top five or the first uh, non-quarterback to come off the board thing to remember about this year that makes it different from other years the zoom availability every team can talk to every prospect there's a limit to the number of times you can talk to each one but you can talk to all of them if you want to so it's not quite the same as who's taking a visit where who's getting a private workout where but this is a guy who yeah he's not going to be there when the 10th pick rolls around chris the question is who's going to jump on him and who's going to end up having a great weapon 
He said that no one has talked to him about playing receiver on a full-time basis. Look at that. 6'5", 245, runs a 4'4", 4, 4, 4, 83 inches. I'd say the hell with tight end. I'm making this guy my number one receiver. Well, you know, there, there's little short area quick movements that – I would say are not on par with a guy like Jamar Chase and Devontae Smith, you know, as far as like explosiveness is concerned that way. But still, yeah, Mike, you're right. There's a lot of traits there. He's going to be used in that. The name of the game will be like what we talked about. He's going to be utilized like a Travis Kelsey, like a Darren Waller with the, the, the Las Vegas Raiders. You know, yeah, you'll see some from the traditional set, but you're going to see plenty of him split out. And it doesn't really matter. You know, again, he's going to be one of those things where it's, oh, linebacker or safety's covered him. Well, he's faster and more athletic than them. Oh, wait, they put a corner on him? Well, he's bigger than them. They, he'll box them out. He'll use his body to shield them. So uh, it's plenty of receiver will be in his future. That, that will be the value of him. But when you're that big and he's a willing blocker, he's going to be a pain in the butt, you know, as far as trying to figure out how to match up with him when he's on the football field. We talked about Chase, the number one receiver on Chris's board at the position. Two of the others in the top six worked out yesterday. Florida's Kadarius Toney yeah. and LSU's Terrace Marshall. What did you see from them that that made you either feel good about why they're sure. where you have them or made you think, man, I got them too low, or maybe I got them too high? Well, no, I, I don't I don't feel any different about where I got them ranked or anything like that. Kadarius Toney, I mean, is a is a weapon. He's a, a like a special athlete who needs polish as a wide receiver, but has too many just raw skills and explosiveness and speed to nitpick too much about always oh, route running. Yeah, he's gonna have to work on that, but he's gonna be dangerous with or without the ball in his hand. The guy that like people are sleeping on a little bit is the guy you see at number six there, Terrace Marshall Jr. I mean, he is the one I think that he. he I was impressed with his pro day yesterday. One, listen, I, I think he's a first-round talent. He's a lot like Justin Jefferson was last year, maybe a hair faster. But I think the thing that jumped out to me about the pro day a little with him is there's a little – I didn't realize he was as thick and as put together as the way he is. That's what excites me there. So he's got really good quick feet. He's got the ability to be, like, tough and strong over the middle like Justin Jefferson was. And, and honestly, I think there's maybe a little bit more big play ability with uh, Terrace Marshall. I'm not sure he's the overall as good a wide receiver, but might have a little more straight line speed than Justin Jefferson did. And we know how special he was for your Vikings last year. Kyle Trask, Florida quarterback, not one of your top six, but uh, a guy whose name has been mentioned as sure. one of the top candidates this year. What were your thoughts on his performance and, and does it, push him up the stack at all I think it does because because his film is underwhelming he's a really big guy with a slow delivery slow feet you know for as big as he is he doesn't necessarily stand in there with the trash around him like you would like to there's a lot of like wait why are you falling backwards there's nobody around you type throws you know so on film it's good but it's not great but the biggest issue I had was just going no, man, this day and age, this quarterback right here with this long, you know, elongated release and kind of clunky feet and everything like that, this, this is an outdated quarterback. But I do think he really helped himself yesterday as far as the pro day is concerned. One, he changed the way he looked. He lost a lot of weight, you know, which I first want to go, wait, you're a quarterback. How are we overweight to begin with? That, to me, is a warning sign. But he did – look a lot better as far as just popping around and put, moving his feet and popping them underneath them and on the move, those type of things, to where it changed the look of the player a little bit. And even with the throwing motion, it was quicker. you know. So all of it was better, and I do think it's going to make teams feel a little bit better about him. I'm interested to see where he ends up, Mike, because I think he's one of those guys where there will be a few people that really like him in the NFL, and maybe he is that part of that next group that goes off the board after the big six. But I think there's also a group of people in the NFL who are going to look at him and just go, no, these quarterbacks don't work anymore this day in the age in the NFL, and I, I don't I don't want to deal with it. So it'll be interesting. And the reality is the faster they come off at the top of the draft, the more likely the other guys go sooner than 
usual because even though teams say we're taking the best available player, their assessment of best available is always driven by their actual needs. And if they fly off early, there will be more who come off the board later. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.